Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is giving you my list of the five things you must do after you install Pop! OS. Now this is an updated version because with the new Cosmic release, some of the items in my last list are no longer necessary as the System76 team went ahead and did some of those things for you. So that said, the first thing you should do is obviously update your system. This is the easiest and probably one of the most important things to go ahead and do. And to do this, you're just gonna to want to go ahead and open up your terminal and type in sudo apt update. What this is gonna do is fetch the, through the repositories and pull any packages that need to get updated. And then from there, you have two options. We can run sudo apt full upgrade. And what that's gonna do is not only upgrade all the packages on your system, but it's also going to check and make sure that your actual distribution is upgraded to the latest version. Uh, if you don't want that and you just want the packages to be updated, including the components of the distribution with the current version, you could just run sudo apt upgrade. An alternative to this is just to open up your pop shop. And then from here, going over to the installed tab, if there are any updates available, you could go ahead and download them through this if you do not feel like using the terminal. So now that your system is completely up to date, we're gonna to go to step two of the things that you should do after you install Pop! OS, and that is to get a backup utility. And in this case, what we're gonna be doing is using TimeShift. Now TimeShift comes with a lot of Linux distributions, but it does not come with Pop! OS. So what you're gonna to want to do is go ahead and install this, type in your password. This is important because you do want snapshots and backups for your system, just in case if something goes wrong when you're tinkering with it, or you have some kind of system failure. This tool makes it really easy to roll back your system to an earlier point, so basically everything is recoverable. Now, TimeShift is a great tool because Pop! OS doesn't use the BetterFS file system, and if it did, snapshots would already be built in, but since it's not, we can go ahead and use TimeShift to accomplish the same goals. Now this isn't gonna be a full on time shift tutorial. I have a whole separate video on that because this really is an in-depth program where you can set up and customize a lot of how backups work. But to get a good head start, we're gonna to wanna to go with this first selection here, hit next. It's gonna go through and estimate our file system size. And then once it does that, we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And this is where you set your snapshot levels. What we're gonna do is keep it at daily for now, keep five of them because if something happens to your system and you notice the next day, you could roll it back up to five days essentially. From here, we go ahead and click on next. And from here is where you're gonna want to select if you want your home directory to be included in the snapshot. Do be careful doing this because a lot of times that home directory is huge and you could run out of space creating snapshots really quick. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and exclude these files, click next, and then I do recommend you go ahead and read this, click finish, and here is time shift. Now another thing I'd recommend is set your snapshot location to be an external or a different drive on your system. So if something does happen to your main hard drive, those snapshots are gonna be safe. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much more into this. There is a link in the description for a full time shift tutorial. So with all that, we're gonna go to the third thing you should probably do after you go ahead and install Pop! OS, and that is to install the Ubuntu Restricted Extras. So sudo apt-get install Ubuntu restricted, restricted extras. The uh, commands for everything will be down in the description. You hit enter, you type in your password, and this is basically everything it's gonna go ahead and download. Essentially a wide variety of different media codecs and the Microsoft core fonts, basically anything that's not gonna be included in a GNU Linux operating system out of the gate, but you may want on your system for compatibility reasons, you're gonna get through the Ubuntu restricted extras. So hit enter to continue, and then it's gonna go through the process of downloading and installing this. And during the installation of this, this is gonna come up. This is essentially a EULA for the Microsoft fonts that we're gonna go ahead and put on our system, being that this is a Microsoft product, essentially you are gonna to have to agree to their terms of service, and it's not really open source software. So you can go ahead through and read this if you would like to, and then once you do, you hit the over button and hit enter on okay, accept those licensed terms, and then it's gonna go ahead, continue with the installation, and finish up. 
Now, one of the things I mentioned in my previous video is enabling the minimize and maximize buttons. Thankfully, the System76 team has come around and added wonderful customization options in which you can enable that out of the gate without having to add any weird extensions or anything like that. And that brings me to the fourth thing to go ahead and do, and that is really explore those new settings that they've given us. And those can be found in your settings under desktop. And here is where you could go ahead and configure just about everything. Another item I included in that list was adding a dock. And as you can see, the dock is here and enabled. So these settings under desktop will allow you to control just about everything from the buttons to the dock to how everything is shaped and the positioning. Here under window controls is how you go ahead and enable those minimize and maximize buttons. So you go ahead and enable those there. You can customize your top bar up here. You can set your super key action and by default it will open up this. Which using this tool you go ahead and use your arrow keys to switch between various windows that you have open on your system. You can use it to search for applications and you can even use it to search for files. So that's another really cool tool to go ahead and play with and check out. But if you don't like it, you can set it to open up the classic applications menu. So now if I hit the Windows key it will open up just my application screen but I'm gonna close that out and keep the launcher for now. And then going over here, we also have our background settings. We have more appearance options, so you can switch between light and dark themes. And one of the dedicated items on the previous list was adding a dock. The dock is right here, and this is where you can go ahead and enable or disable your dock, change some of the general dock options. And then here we have our icon sizes, so you could go ahead and change that if you'd want to. If I scroll down here, we can move the dock to the left side like that. And even if we wanted to, we can get rid of the extend feature. So it's just this right here, extend dock to edges of screen. Deselect that and now our dock is more of a floating macOS style dock. So one of the beautiful things about Pop! OS is there's really not that much to do out of the gate to get your system up and going. For the most part, it's already there and it's already rocking, it's usable, and it has just, just about everything you're going to need. It comes with just enough applications to get going, has some cool tools, some office suites, web browser, email client, text editor, the things you need to get started. But if you're going to really have some fun with your system, the fifth thing to do is to go ahead and really explore their pop shop and get some applications. On this home screen under Pop Picks, we see quite a few really good ones out of the gate, such as Atom, Visual Code Studio, if you're into coding. We have Steam on here, so you go ahead and get all your games up and running. We have Lutris, so basically anything that's not supported on Steam, you could probably get going with Lutris. Spotify, some wonderful terminal alternatives if you're not a fan of the, just the basic GNOME terminal shell here. And there is much more. If you scroll down, we have the individual categories for everything you go ahead and look at. Uh, media production, for example, here you're going to find things like uh, Ardor, Audacity, which are wonderful audio applications. There is so much to go ahead and choose from. If you are running a Linux system, the options for applications are near endless. And with that, I do actually have two different videos going over my top recommended applications, and those will be linked on the screen now as well as in the description. So I do recommend you check out those videos if you're looking for some wonderful applications to go ahead and get installed on your system. So you could go ahead and start having some fun. Everything I talked about will be linked down in the description. Uh, like this video if you did. If you have any additional tips at all for anybody else, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. With all of that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.